Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy. That's the name of the show. I don't know why you're expecting anything afterwards. All right, fine. AKA Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. Final Fantasy XIV related or not. Uh, got some questions in the YouTube section below. Got some questions on the Dream Forums I want to answer. But first, I do want to wish any mothers out there, by the time this airs, it'll be the day after Mother's Day, but happy Mother's Day to anyone out there. Hopefully, you and your family had a good time together. Anybody who was celebrating it with their mother, hopefully you guys had a good time as well. Uh, sorry if I look a little bit like a mess. I've uh, been sick today, believe it or not. I don't seem very sick right now, but that's because I just woke up from a six-hour nap. <laughs> so I'm feeling a little bit better uh, just in time for recording. So anyway, let's get right to the questions. All right, so we'll do this the way we usually do it. I'll do a few YouTube questions, then I'll go to the majority of the questions on the Dream Network forums. Remember, there is a question thread for next week, week 40. I think we're only three months away from a year of Mondays with Mr. Happy. That's a lot of Mondays. I mean, anyway, let me answer some of the YouTube questions. We'll move over to the Dream Forums for the majority of the questions. So the question I have here is, uh, hey, Mr. Happy, question for the week on the road at the moment. So I want to ask this here and now, well, it's fresh on my mind. How do you feel about a disciple of hand class that could craft materia? Ugh. Adding new and interesting stats that would lower materia costs on the market boards for common materials, but would allow more expensive and rare materials to go into circulation. Perhaps even materia with stat combinations. So when you put it the way like you do at the end, if, they, if there were changes to the materia system in such a way that the combination of materia and having hybrid materials was a beneficial way of doing things, I think it would be okay. I think that uh, a disciple of hand that could craft materia would be perfect. With the way the system works now, I'm not a fan of the idea, mainly because no one's no one would spirit bond anymore. Like you say afterwards, this would make spirit bonding an option, uh, spirit bonding option more like a disenchanting process with RNG, whereas the crafts could do it definitely. Yeah, if you, we made changes and we had more interesting materia, hybrid materials, absolutely, a crafter that's able to do that, I think, would be mandatory at that point. But with the way the system works now, with the very linear way that the materia scales up and its stats, if there was any option that wasn't spirit bonding, all the prices would crash on the market board, and materia wouldn't be as lucrative as a uh, as a thing anymore. Unless, of course, you had to spirit bond to get the materials in order to make the materia, because then that would still allow. Mm, but then the, I guess the question is how it would all work together in terms of economy, because then you would need to be concerned about, well, if there's so this, this, so that would now mean that the people who spear upon make less money. Um, actually, they may be able to make more money. There's a lot of ways this could go because if they could, if it was consistent that they could get a material that works for tier fours or tier threes, and it doesn't matter like what it is. And there's no like RNG, like, oh, well, I guess I, I got screwed from this fire four material instead of a savage might four. instead of it's just, oh, it's a tier four materia catalyst, you know? this sells for 60k every time it actually may work out to be good for everybody the prices would probably crash on the market board quite a bit but uh as long as it was still expensive um you know what i'm gonna say yeah i think it's a good idea in general i think we would need some changes to the materia system as a whole for it to work but it would be a pretty good idea all right next question from youtube real quick can you buy a personal house if you have a free company house yeah i know people in my free company that have personal houses as well i guess the question is if you are the person who bought the free company house if it would matter i would imagine not yeah you can buy a personal house with a free company house as well and do you think it would matter what your melds are for the next stage or just slap any materia at this point the relic is like a waste of time like you might as well it's what we're like 40 days 39 days something i don't even know without counting uh how many days we are away from the expansion the, the relic if you're not already past the nova step i wouldn't recommend wasting money on the melts period unless you're planning on going all the way to the zeta before 3.1 and even then it's a matter of what advantage does having the zeta give you in the 3.1 relic because if you're gonna have to remeld that thing in 3.1 and on then it's immediately a waste of a wasted effort i'm hoping that what the 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 step it lets you skip and this is what a lot of people have been suggesting is it lets you keep whatever stats you already had on it as opposed to having to do another melding section later on um i would just say yeah just get it done for now and if you need to be and if you can change the melds later you can change the melds later hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us and the last question I'm going to be taking from YouTube. Hey, Happy, I tried making an account on the Dream Network, but I'm not getting a confirmation email, so I'll ask here. Be sure to check your spam folder, because uh, I had, when we first did it, I had the same thing happen. I got sent to spam, and now all my Dream emails just come through normally. Uh, just a quick question for week number 39. In your opinion, how does 14's end game before Echo and Nerfs, thank you for putting that in there, rank in terms of challenge compared to other MMOs you've played? So, a lot of MMOs i played have not been very challenging. Final Fantasy XI, uh, 
was not like to me final fantasy 11 wasn't a challenging mmo it was a patience game which is sometimes hard for a lot of people sometimes you just want to be able to kill the thing you want to get it done you want to win um that that was really where to me all of its difficulty kind of lied was in its level of patience and uh i guess bringing the right jobs in the first place but the actual execution of the fights being very simple just hard hitting bosses not so much mechanics just hard hitting bosses which to me is just not very difficult uh world of warcraft had some pretty challenging bosses uh i played during the glory days a little bit some burning crusade some wrath of the lich king i left during ulduar though and ulduar i've heard was some of the greatest challenge that uh world of warcraft ever had uh, on top of a lot of the burning crusade you know raids before they were nerfed into oblivion um i'd say i'd say that okay not even before echo not even before nerfs when you first enter in the minimum item level required like you just like oh brand new patch we're item level 110 let's go into the fight see how we do the challenge at that level is very well put together for today's standard um they could definitely make things harder they could definitely scale things harder they're definitely holding back you can tell they're holding back and making the fights reasonable. Even though at first it's for the hardcore, eventually they know these fights and their mechanics will become quite reasonable in higher tier gear. Um, that's why I'd say that it's it's an adequate challenge. And at that point, it's, it's actually a very good challenge for the most part. I would like to see them step it up a notch, and that's why I'm looking forward to Alexander Savage. It definitely feels like they put the brakes on Final Coil in terms of mechanical difficulty, and they kind of moved into that whole, it's a lot about damage. You know, it's a lot about absorbing this amount of damage and surviving. And uh, even if that means, like, stacking up and splitting damage or spreading out to make sure you don't take it too much, it's all about there's just a lot of damage on the field. Um, so, it's a good challenge. Uh... It's hard for me to think of the right way to stack it up against other MMOs because World of Warcraft also, like, they release a shit ton of, like, useless bosses and then they have, like, a few really, really tough ones strung in there. So I don't know if that's still the platform that they follow or still the pattern they follow, but I'd say, I'd say it's about even with most other, with, with other MMOs in terms of difficulty. World of Warcraft being the one. Um, yeah, I'd say it's about even with the difficulty of most MMOs. Uh, I think that the Savage modes are more difficult than the majority of fights in other games but there are some fights in wow that just to this day are worse are still considered to be like wow when that first came out that was unbelievable the difficulty of that fight like ragnarok heroic in uh the firelands and you know the what's his name uh arthas the lich king heroic and fights like that those are pretty crazy i still like watching those on youtube from time to time all right, and on that note, let's go over to the Dream Network forums. We've got plenty of questions here, so let me try to get through them as fast as possible. First one, hi, Mr. Happy. I have two questions for Mr. Happy Mondays, a.k.a. Mondays with Mr. Happy. Is it in the other way around, or did I say it wrong at the start? Whatever. My first question is whether I play the game and go uh, go into a heavily trafficked area, Odin Fate. I can hear my PC getting considerably louder. Do you have any tips on how to reduce this? Sounds like you just don't have a very up-to-date PC. Um... Liquid cooling shouldn't be... I mean, I don't... I have liquid cooling on my new computer, but my old computer didn't have that issue. Um, a GTX 660 and a third generation i5. Is it your... I don't know if it's your 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 graphics card whining, uh, which could be because it's a GTX 660, which should run the game perfectly fine, but that I don't know if that graphics card specifically has coil whine issues. Um... I'd, I'd look at I'd look I'd Google what your parts do if your parts have any defective things that people have reported because uh, that it sounds like that to me it also just sounds like your computer is just getting really hot so a new cooling system might be good uh, my second question is will you be changing to an Alra I don't know whether I'll be changing to an Alra I have four Fantasia so even if I could do it and then just change back if I don't like it so that's what I'll probably end up doing change and then change back if I don't like it next question repost from week thirty eight no worries about not answering oh well sorry I didn't get it last week. Yo, Happy, been wondering this for a while, and I know this isn't something you can know the answer to exactly without working with Square Enix, but there's Ifrit, Titan, Garuda, King Magomog, uh, Shiny Weapons, Leviathan has mirrors for Shiny Weapons, Shiva has dust. Where are the Shiny Rumble Weapons? Will that ever be a thing? I don't even know what, I don't even remember what they look like, but uh, I would just like some some ridiculous lightning bolts like all over the place on those things. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that they just skipped over him in terms of a shiny weapon. I guess the bump in item level to the accessories was a more important thing to them as opposed to adding on a higher tier. Because you have to remember, Ramu kind of came at a weird point with the item level of his 
armor and of, of, of his accessories and his weapons because the weapons were item level 100 when patch 2.3 came out and by that point having an item level 100 weapon you could do it much easier from just doing it like circus tower or doing second coil or something like that um and then you have shiva which came at the beginning shiva and leviathan both came in major progression patches so and then i don't know they added crafting weapons for the other ones they could have done it let's they they could have done it i don't think they will but they definitely could have done it and on that same note king mog is the only primal to not have a pony probably because a moogle pony because all the ponies are based on elements cooking mog doesn't have an element and a moogle pony would be kind of weird Next question. Hey, happy question for week 39. In brief, what content do you think a new player should have mastery over going into Heavensward versus what can just be cleared? I think that... Fin okay, so finishing the main story is something that you shouldn't... That's not something you have mastery over. That's just something that you should clear because it's mandatory. I think working on the Extreme Primals and Final Coil are really things that, if you can get that far, should be a focus. Because... If you can if you can learn those fights, you can at least step foot into Alexander Normal with some confidence. With, hey, I recognize that bosses do these kind of abilities. I recognize that bosses do these kind of things. That I've seen this mechanic before. Oh, Alexander first boss. Oh, that's just like this boss that we did before, except it's a little different now. Being able to identify things like that helps with raid progression in a very serious sense now of course if a player is catching up getting their item level up for the initial leveling process or starting to collect gear for whichever job they're going to be playing from 30 to 50 uh if it's going to be one of the new jobs that is from 30 to 50 uh, that's another thing you can do and yeah just learning to recognize mechanics and the ways that you can interact with them is very important there's going to be some new dynamics with that in the expansion, I'm sure, with new abilities, new jobs. There are going to be new ways to deal with certain things, and I expect to see some new mechanics overall. Um, but that's a good way to start, is to start learning how to identify mechanics and how to counter them. All right, we have a story-related question. The only reason I'm saying that now is because there was a spoiler tag in the forums, and I very much appreciate this person for using a spoilers tag. Uh, I'm going to remember, I swear. When I do this, it means spoilers are over. It's for patch 2.55. Personal question. Hey, Mr. Happy, cheers for all your hard work. I got a story-related question. Do you think we will waste Ilbert and rescue Raubon, as well as determine the fate of the Scions at 3.0, or do you reckon that'll be safe for later content patches? I expect that's going to be a major point of the expansion. Lolo Rito and the and Omega Weapon are very likely going to be extremely important points, especially based on the trailer showing Lolo Rito just being a center point for Heavensward. Um, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I think Minfili is alive. I don't know about the rest of the Scions. I'm willing to accept that they are alive in some sense. Uh, but probably not alive, alive, like, physically. Although, you know, as much as that was supposed to be a sad story at the end, they're probably just gonna throw, like, hey, we're all fine, woo! And, <laughs> and then we're just gonna, I don't know. I, we'll definitely be exploring those aspects, though. See, I remembered. Next question. Hi, Mr. Happy. So first off, I'd like to say that you make me enjoy 14 even more. Thanks for your hard work and great YouTube personality. Thank you. Well, thank you for your hard work. Thank, thank you for your compliments. <laughs> My reading, not good. Uh, two questions I have. One, I pre-ordered the 3.0 PS4 CE and was wondering what I need to buy for PC in order to play on both systems. You will, you, you don't need the CE on the PC. Just get the game itself. Your CE bonuses, you just need to buy it on one platform. Uh, question number two, it's not a problem to play this game overseas, right? I play on Hyperion, which is an NA server, but can be played from the Mideast. So, Mideast or, South e or uh, Southeast Asia, I've known people who do play from those. If you're specifically in China, though, you may have issues because uh, you're not going to be able to access the servers outside of China. It's just China is very strict with their rules, and they have their own servers. If you use a VPN, you should be able to get out there. Uh, I had a question similar to this last week. Um... Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be rough. You're definitely going to suffer major latency. Um, but that's that's the best you can do. You know, the best you can do is get like Battle Ping or What the Fast and try to do it as best as possible. Hopefully the EU servers come out and then you can play from those locations a lot better. Well, at least from the Mideast. It should be closer. It should have a better connection. Maybe. Maybe not. Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. Question for week 39. It's kind of a small spoiler for the story, so just warning in advance. You guys know the rules. Do you think that Tataru is involved with the Asians or the Crystal Braves' evil plot because she kept giving me those mysterious looks when you would walk away? But at the end, she seems sweet and innocent. I'm having so much trouble trusting Lollafels. I don't blame you there. Um, I think she's bigger in the story than we think she is. I don't necessarily think she's evil. I think Odeon J kind of uh, 
takes takes the cake there. And honestly, I'm not even 100% convinced Odeon J is evil. I think he's just trying to get the inside track on the Asians. So I think we'll see that she's going to be more important. I think they're going to make her an important part of the story. I don't think she's literally just going to be the doorman or the door Lalafell for uh, forever, you know? See, I remembered again. Next one. Hello, Mr. Happy. I enjoy your videos, but this is my first time asking a question. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for signing up for the forums. And thank you for asking a question. Story-related question. Wow, you guys got a lot of story-related questions. There we go. <laughs> with the story events of 2.55, what do you think will happen with the Immortal Flames going forward? Oh, they're 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 boned. <laughs> the Immortal Flames are gonna be completely taken over by Lolo Rito. And uh, they're probably still going to exist. I mean, they still do exist, as you can see, in 2.55. It's just that they're going to be corrupted just like the Brass Blades. And it's just, it's not going to end well. Man, it's just it's not going to end well. And the relations between the Grand Companies, well, now we have another reason to have a new PvP map, at least. Because I'm sure the Grand Companies do not trust the Immortal Flames one bit anymore. I almost forgot, I swear. Next question. Hello, Mr. Happy. Long time viewer. First time question near -er -er. <laughs> Questionerer, I think that's what it says. Sorry about that. <laughs> Two questions for you. One, now that 2.0 has been out for well over a year and have come to recogn uh, recognize its full and expressive lore, as well as a shockingly amazing plot and story, have you changed your view on the content added and to be added from other games in the series? No, I still just, I want it to continue to be a unique story to 14. They've, they've done all, they've done all, so many little things to reference other Final Fantasies. In fact, there was a post on the official forums that detailed all those sometime last week. Um, I want them to continue to stick to Eorzea and throw in those little tidbits here and there like, hey, I remember that character, but that's it. Don't make them a central point of the story. The second question, at some point, do you hope they tie in these inclusions from other titles? No, I, I don't want like, I don't want them to be like, oh, Sephiroth has come back and he's taken and Cloud shows up and he's like, I'm here to save you guys or something. Like, I don't want any of that. Like, you have to remember 1.0 story was literally Final Fantasy 7 story. Nail Van Darnus was Sephiroth. There's a scene with him walking through the fire. He summoned Meteor to destroy the world. We tried to stop it. It failed. And then we had to get sent forward in time. Okay, that's not the exact way Final Fantasy 7 worked. But basically, he summoned Meteor. Dalamud being a red moon. Final Fantasy 4. There's so many tie-ins back from 1.0 that were like way more ex expansive than the one than are uh, way more inclusive of other titles than we have it now almost uh i don't want any more i don't want other final fantasy stories to get mixed in with ours i like that crystal tower they didn't say oh this is final fantasy 3's crystal tower they were like it's final fantasy 3's crystal tower but it's fit it's made to fit this world so that it's our story and not just final fantasy 3's story um that's okay but even then i want more originality in the game next question hey happy hey Love the vids. For any of you guys come by my Twitch stream, you know that I do that. Very short question. When do you think the next MMO will be around under the Final Fantasy title? Do you think it will have the same effect that 14 had? Uh, that 14, that 14 had on 11. First of all, 14 1.0 just made people go like, yeah, I'm going to go back to 11 for a little while. <laughs> um, I don't think any MMO that comes out is ever going to have 14's problem ever again. The one big thing that puts 14 at the forefront of like gaming news and people's attention is that 1.0 is a complete and utter disaster and then it came back and now it's a very successful game. Um that's really where it comes from. I don't see another MMO from Final Fantasy having that same impact. Who knows, maybe Final Fantasy 17, you know, 11, 14, 17. Maybe that'll be an online game. Maybe it'll be revolutionary and great. Maybe it'll be more of the same. The thing is, unless you're going to innovate on this platform, like, you're going to make something that's entirely different. It's not tab targeting. It's not, you know, this hot bar oriented thing. They would literally have to make, like, an action-based MMO like Black Desert for another online Final Fantasy to make sense at all. Then you have the menu-based Final Fantasy 11, which, you know, go into the phones next year. Um... Well, it'll still be on PC, but it'll be on mobile phones. And you'll have 14, the, the hot bar, tab target game. And then you have 17, like the action game, like Black Desert. Then maybe, but I don't think anything will have an impact like Final Fantasy 14 did ever again. Next question. Hello, Mr. Happy. What do you think if they added one cross-class trait? Only some of the traits won't be in. Added one... Yeah, okay, so I was uh, just... Okay, raise, blood for blood, etc. Love the vids. I mean, it would have to be designed to be cross-class. Um, that would be the most important thing because some things are very specific. Uh, I guess how could, first of all, it would have to be a trait. Yeah, that's hard because either it has to be a trait that affects an ability that is cross class, like blood for blood or invigorate, for example, or it would have to be a trait that is literally like, Hey, this is a cross class trait. This gives you a passive on the other. It would have to literally be designed for that one inclusion. 
I think it could work. I think a lot of things could work in this game. Like I get questions like this a lot and a lot of things can work. You can't ever just say, no, that'll never work. And I used to say that. It wouldn't work in the way the game is put together right now. The game would just need to evolve a lot to allow that. I think the game could definitely evolve to allow that. All right, next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. First, I'd like to say keep up the great work. Really enjoy your vids. You've really helped myself as a new player. Thank you for the compliment, my friend. Anyways, I have a few quick questions, mainly regarding the expansion. One, as a new player who is interested in endgame rage, I just focus on the story so I can get into the expansion. Or, just take some time away from the story and try out Coil and gear my character. I don't have much time to play, so taking time out for Coil can mean not finishing. No, finish the main story. Finish the main story, dude. I know I just had that whole thing about learning the raids as something that you should have a mastery over before, but you can't even literally play the expansion without the main story. It's something you can go ahead and learn in Alexander. Alexander Normal is easier than the current Coil. It'll be an easier stepping, st uh, stepping, is it stepping stool? Step. It'll be an easier way for you to get into raiding. <laughs> And the second question, uh, with the new jobs coming in the expansion, we have three tanks and three healers and eight-man content. We only have two of each. Do you think that if two of the job work really well together, that one tank healing job could become almost obsolete? Yeah, and I've commented on this before. Um, you give an example here, and you actually give the example I'm afraid of happening. For example, if Scholar and Astrologian turn out to be the best healing combination, does that mean White Mage falls to the wayside? And I guess you got, the thing is, we're trying to judge that based on the what the what utilities the jobs have now when that could very easily change going into the expansion. It could also be that they're just equal to the point where it doesn't make a difference, although I find that hard to believe that that's going to be the case. Um, like, for example, for progression-based content, I'm afraid Astrologian will replace White Mage for two reasons. One, as long as their shield overwrites or doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the Eloquium shield, if they have the same buff, it could change. But um, they, you could very easily just probably run Astrologian and Scholar, have the Astrologian be a full-time healer with the Scholar pet, and the Scholar can do DPS. Scholar's advantage of being able to do like 300 to 350 DPS, while the other healer and the fairy take care of the majority of the healing, and then the Scholar just you know, like comes out for like suckers, sacred soils, and eloquiums, or for burst healing. It's just, it's such a good thing to be able to do, and I don't see Scholar being removed from the equation. Uh, that being said, Scholar works best when in synergy with another job. Scholar itself is an amazing job, but when in synergy with White Mage, that is when it is at its most powerful point. Um, like I like I would have, I'd rather have double White Mage if I was going to stack up, but double Scholar is like you could do just fine with it. I just rather have Scholar and another job. They synergize so well together. I'm curious to see what ends up happening because we're going to lose the enhanced protect if we lose white mage we lose the six percent on stone skin but does that even matter based on astrologian's kit we don't know yet we'll find out soon next question hey mr happy keep up all the great work i always look forward to your videos i have a few questions but i'll try to keep them brief or at least let's let your answers be brief i've noticed a few videos you have glasses that you wear have changed having a slight brown yellow tint instead of being clear I've never owned clear glasses before because I don't have a, I don't have prescription lenses. I don't have a prescription at all. These glasses I've always used are uh, these are gunners. They are for protecting my eyes from the tint of the monitor, so that way I don't burn my eyes looking at his monitor like 14 hours a day. Um, you say uh, colorblind lenses? Yes, I've I've been told about in Chrome a lot. Listen, I've been colorblind my whole life. I don't need to magically see colors now, and especially not spend six to eight hundred dollars on it, which is what I remember it being when I looked at the website. But thank you. Uh, I I've always used uh, some sort of gunners of uh, when I was at my girlfriend's. It was different brand, but still the the protective lenses is all I really use. Uh, second question. I remember hearing Astrologian was originally supposed to be a salve maker, but was changed. I love the job and Bravely Default. I was equally upset that it was removed in the sequel, while so many other jobs stayed. Do you know why salve maker and chemist and alchemist might not be getting as much love as it used to get? Probably because being a potion maker mid combat is hard to convey in in very fast combat. Like when you have turn based combat games, it makes a lot of sense. You can stop, you make the potion, you throw it, whatever. In a game like this, it's like you're you carrying all these like you're carrying all these chemicals with you and you're just like that's not a safe way to do alchemy. <laughs> that's just not a safe way to do alchemy, you know what I'm saying? Um and besides alchemist itself of the potion maker 
is a crafting job. So having something that's a salve maker that is a combat job is very confusing when you already have these specialized the, there are these specialized potion makers and you're trying to tell me there's some there's another there's a battle job that's so much better at making potions than not only can it make the mid combat in a two and a half second cast time or whatever not but that they're effective and that they're constantly they just can't it, it, there's a lot of logistics that go into it it's a fantasy world whatever anything can work but with alchemist being a crafting class it'd be so awkward to have one as a battle class as well Next question, hey Mr. Happy, thanks for what you do. Your videos keep me interested in 14 despite things winding down with the expansion coming. It's it's not as far away as people think it is. I want you to remember that. It's what, May 11th that you're watching this? June 19th is early access. June 19th, it's so close. Just one question, do you think ninjas will be able to actually make relevant use of stealth in Heaven's Word? Thank you for asking that. I think it's so stupid the way that stealth is. It is, the thing is right now it's a PVP tool. That's what it is. It's not a PVE tool at all. Granted, it makes sense. You know, you're fighting this enemy and you disappear all of a sudden. The enemy's just like, what? I mean, don't get me wrong. You can easily do that. Vanish in World of Warcraft. Perfect example. Oh, I pulled the enemy. I vanished. It lost aggro on me. Perfect, perfect example of a way you can use stealth in combat as a defensive tool. Oh, I pulled aggro on the ad. Vanish. I lost aggro on it. An enmity reducing tool. You know what I'm saying? Even if, and, and then it puts you in stealth so you can then open up on the enemy again. I think the bigger issue is that sneak attack and trick attack share a uh share the cooldown so going stealth mid combat almost becomes useless because you're just it's just not gonna work out you know what i'm saying like it's hard to describe but because those share a cooldown you going you what you have to go stealth mid combat you might as well just sweet on mid combat you know what i'm saying that way you don't lose any global cooldowns or anything like that unless breaking from stealth gave you a temporary buff while you were you know breaking from stealth that would be pretty cool there's ways they can do it and i would love it if they could actually make stealth a meaningful pve piece of content in the expansion all right i'm gonna have to start selecting through the questions at this point uh it's getting pretty late here and uh, i am still sick so i should probably keep this to be a timely video so i'm gonna be skimming through the remainder of the questions you guys asked a lot of them this week if i didn't get to it be sure to try and ask it next week uh the shorter questions by the way i prefer because then i can answer more questions in general longer questions are better answered on like live streams or things like that so uh i'm just gonna do my best here to get through as many as possible next one hey mr happy i have a question for week 39 i'm currently leveling an alt at a different server than my main so that i can play and raid with my real life friends my question is how do you manage time between playing your main and your alt i really enjoy starting fresh but there are times when leveling without the exp bonus burns me out so any tips from you would help um main whenever there's new raid progression out alt whenever i'm bored of my main that's how i do it i know it sucks because your alt is the one playing with your real life friends so it's kind of like you're putting them on the side it sounds like you may end up in a situation where your alt becomes your main because you're playing with your real life friends it's, an, it's a complete possibility um and also i just try to limit my time on the alt like i'll do like my roulettes i'll do maybe a dungeon that's unrelated to the roulette get a few levels and then put it away for the day that way i don't get burned out on it that's usually how i go about doing it Next question. Hey, Happy, do you think that we will ever see different kinds of weapons for each of the jobs like crossbows for Bard, Hammer for Warrior, Mace for Paladin, etc.? Also, what do you think about having different effect on skill depending on what weapons you choose? I feel like 14 could use a bit of diversity. Um, I would like it. I absolutely support it. The thing is, they need to do this now and not wait till there's a bunch of new jobs in the game already using all these different weapon ideas. They need to do that pretty soon. The ultimate thing is, it sounds like it's, your question's kind of inspired from Guild Wars 2, where equipping a different weapon changes your skills. As they all have to be equal. That's the big thing with, like, when you have ridiculous, like, World of Warcraft, for example, they have a ridiculous amount of specs. And while the majority of them are playable, there's always a bunch of specs that it's literally like, oh, that spec is useless this patch. This is the best spec for this job. Just play that. And some people go against that and they're just like, oh, well, I'll play this instead. It's got better AoE damage. It's more satisfying for me. Like, that's why I played Demonology Warlock back when Cataclysm first came out. I love the AoE. I love the Metamorphism AoE. Um, but at the time, Affliction was... Yeah, the Affliction and Demonology were pretty equal. But then the final one, Destruction, was useless at the time. Um... So that's what I'm saying. When you have multiple specs, people are still going to ultimately go to the best spec. And if a spec isn't good, people won't want... Even if you like it, people won't want to play with it. People won't want... Sure, the duty finder, that doesn't matter. They don't have a choice. But uh, for raid content and stuff, people just won't play with you. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but it's true. So if they do that, it needs to... I would like just different weapons and the same damage and whatnot just for the sake of... Uh, just for the sake of vanity purposes. But in terms of different specs, yeah, I'm, 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 
I'm hesitant just because of the way I've seen specs work out in every other MMO. Action RPGs, it works out okay, but every other MMO, it's shaky. Next question. Hello, Mr. Happy. I played in 2.0, but my potato cannot handle the game, so I did not get past level 30. I switched to WoW and got really into the webcomic Dark Legacy. It's a huge chain of comics all about a guild's journey through the game, poking fun at certain nuances and annoyances of what makes WoW what it is. I've watched. I've, I've not watched. I've seen Dark Legacy before. It's really good. I switched back to Final Fantasy 14 recently. I was hoping you might know of a webcomic about 14 because it's always nice to have something humorous to read about when you can relate to. GamerEscape.com, they do comics? I don't know... I like I watch I, I I keep saying watch I look at them or read them occasionally and uh, I don't know that they're necessarily all connected together but they do poke fun at the nuances of, uh, of Final Fantasy 14 the annoyances and the things that we like so I would check out gamerscape.com they're good for generally lots of content and the web comics are one of them I don't it's not exactly like Dark Legacy but it is still fun and entertaining to read whenever they put one out next question here's a question for Mondays with Mr Happy aka Mr Happy Monday so I did get it right. With a new job level cap increasing to 60, what kind of rewards do you feel might be appropriate for the job quest? More new AF armor would be great. We're going to be getting abilities from the new job quests. Um, for the most part, they said that AF is not going to come through job quests, but that there's going to be another way of getting it, and it's still going to be fairly simple like it was before. Um, so, job quests, new abilities. That's the most appropriate thing I can imagine them doing. Next question. Hello, Mr. Happy. What's happy ending? heard that joke before why wow, my ear just popped all of a sudden everything sounds so strange my question for this week is on astrologian what is the barrier stance all about is it a dps stance like cleric stance for white mage or is it a more supportive stance so they have healer stance and barrier stance think of it like white mage scholar that's the best way i could think to describe it it's like trading out your cure for eloquium it's going to be the same like imagine every spell let's say you have cure and you are in healer stance when you're in healer stance cured does more healing. That's exactly that's what it's designed to do. While you're in barrier stance, it does less healing, but provides a shield, or maybe no healing at all and just a shield. Who knows? But that's how it is. It's a supportive stance. It's not a DPS stance. All right, next question. Hey, Happy, thanks for answering my question a few weeks ago. Got another couple for you. I'm interested in checking out the live stream of State of the Realm rather than just watching the YouTube replay. How would I go about doing that? Please explain in a way that's easy to understand for a technophobe, and what time does it start? So, uh, easiest way to find out when it's going to go live is to go to dreamnetwork.tv, and on the main page, there's a giant countdown that lets you know when it's happening. And then when it actually starts, you can click on it right there, and it'll take you to my live stream. Also, you can just show up at my live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Savings Time, depending on the time of year. We, I am GMT-5, and you can find my Twitch link in the description of this video. Your second question, do you know if there's any way to get a pre-order on the PlayStation 4 Digital Deluxe version of Heavensward? Not yet, but they said sometime in May, it will become available on the PlayStation Store. All right, guys, I can answer a few more questions just looking through to see if I can find some short ones. That way I can fit them all in. And then we're going to have to call it a video. You guys asked a lot of questions this week, and I was not prepared for it. From now on, I'm going to look at the Dream Network forums. If I see three pages of questions, I'm going directly there. I'm sorry, YouTube. Um, so first section right here is a uh, question for Mondays with Mr. Happy. Do you think new jobs have poetics weapons? Poetics probably aren't going to exist as soon as 3.0 comes out. The item level 120 stuff will probably get thrown into a level into a level 54 dungeon or something like that. And that'll be it for whatever. I mean, that's kind of strange because, you know, it's level 50 gear in a level 54 dungeon. Uh, I don't know. The tombstones are probably going to be gone. All of them have just come strictly replaced with law and esoterics when it becomes applicable. So, uh, yeah, I think they will, but I don't think we'll necessarily be calling them poetics weapons anymore after the expansion starts. Question number two, do you think they are hiding a third primal from us? I don't know. It seems like they aren't. It seems like it is Ravana Bismarck, and then that's it. Maybe maybe what they're doing is they want to save the third primal for 2.1 instead of you throwing us three primals all at once. And then having to throw us like a new difficulty in, in 3.1. Did I say 2.1? I think I did. Uh, in 3.1. My apologies. Uh, I think that that third primal is going to have to wait till 3.1. Next question. Hey, Happy. So I have a quick question I don't think has been asked answered. So with the new way devs are looking at the job class system, do you think they will split Scholar and Summoner? I hope so. I don't think they will. I wish that they would, though. I mean, here's the thing. It's difficult splitting up jobs that only the only difference between them is five abilities pretty much i mean and fundamentally their roles but those five abilities are what separates them you know what summon they get for each of the levels and then you know one has eloquium one has fester one has 
uh, you know, sucker, one has, uh, one has <laughs> tried disaster, <laughs> waste of an ability. Um, I don't think they will. I hope that, I, I wish that they would, though. Hello, Mr. Happy. Question for week 39. How do you check how much DPS your character is doing? So, this is not officially supported by the Final Fantasy XIV devs, and they have warned you that if you misuse it, you will be banned from the game. But there is something called Advanced Combat Tracker, which is what most people who play on, well, anyone who plays on a PC, really uses to track their damage. Uh, Yoshi P says, we know that people need this tool, so... As much as it's not supported, it's not allowed technically because of the way it reads information from the client, that uh, he's still like, just don't tell and you won't get in trouble. You know, as long as you don't say, as long as you don't go into like a Labyrinth of the Ancients and be like, what the, f I'm doing the most damage here. I'm the lowest item level. Everyone here sucks. If you do that, you'll probably get banned for using Advanced Combat Tracker. Otherwise, you'll probably be okay. You can Google it real quick. You should be able to find it. Also, Foldosaurus, a member of the Dream Team, made a very extensive guide about Advanced Combat Tracker in one of our forums. So you should go check that out as well. All right, and I'm going to answer two questions at the same time here because I read through a few of these remaining questions to try and find the last question I wanted to answer, but there are two that I can kill in a single answer. So... Hey there, Happy. Long time watcher, first time question asker. Thank you for coming by. As someone who has really enjoyed the entire Zodiac Weapon quest line, I have four Z You need therapy, man. I'm sorry. And should hopefully have a fit. No, now you really need therapy. My friends in game think I'm crazy. I think you're crazy. How long would you speculate it would take to build a complete weapon in Heaven's Word from an original relic to the Zodiac Weapon Zeta equivalent? We will eventually be getting in future patches during Heaven's Word. Just curious on your thoughts since I enjoy building weapons and I couldn't care less about when they get outdated. Well, I actually like that you have that outlook because it lets you enjoy the game more for you. And that's honestly perfect. I still think you're crazy, but <laughs> at least you're crazy and having fun. And that's what matters. Um... It'll probably take the same amount of time. They said it's going to be the same idea for the new 3.1 relic, which is a time for power. And that's basically what we have right now. I'd expect it to take about the same amount of time. So <laughs> you'll have a ton of fun. It's hard to say. I had another question, honestly, like a few below yours, where somebody says that they hate it. And they're on their seventh Animus book and they hate it. And is it going to see an ultra nerf, the Zeta one in the expansion? The Zeta questline, the level 50 Zeta questline, is going to see an intense nerf going into 3.0. Because it is going to be a glamour item at that point, because level 50 gear won't matter. Um, the other, as, as if for getting an actual relevant weapon for your question, uh... Yeah, for glamour purposes. Yeah, they'll be doing it. They will be doing it. So hopefully that answers your question. But anyway, thank you everyone for asking your questions. I'm so sorry there were a ton of questions I couldn't get to. There were just so, so many of them. Thank you everyone for asking your questions this week. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And ask your questions on the Dream Network forums. If it keeps getting to three pages, I'm just going to have to pull every question from the Dream Network forums. Because it's a lot of questions. I do request you try to keep them timely so I can answer more questions. I know... Sometimes it's like you got to convey a point. Trust me, I know I do a lot of talking, a lot of extra point conveying, but it makes it so much easier and it's so and it's fairer for everyone else if it's a question that I can get through a little bit more quickly and then uh, move on to the next one. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, take care.